you can find it in 1 Thessalonians and then our second scripture passage from Psalm 98. Paul writes, give thanks in every situation because this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And then from Psalm 98, sing to the Lord a new song because he has done wonderful things. His own strong hand and his own holy arm have won the victory. The Lord has made his salvation widely known. He has revealed his righteousness in the eyes of all the nations. God has remembered his loyal love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. Every corner of the earth has seen God's salvation. Shout triumphantly to the Lord, all the earth, be happy, rejoice out loud, sing your praises. Sing your praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of music, with trumpets and a horn blast, shout triumphantly before the Lord, the King. Let the sea and everything in it roar, the world and all its inhabitants too. Let all the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains rejoice out loud all together before the Lord because he is coming to establish justice on the earth. He will establish justice in the world rightly. He will establish justice among all people fairly. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. ask that you would join me in prayer. God, we look today at the power of two little words. Two little words that have big impact. God, I pray that it would be your words that are heard today and that you would help us to understand and to know what it is that you have for us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So our scripture Scripture today was to give thanks in every situation because this is God's will for, Christ, for you in Christ Jesus. Now our key passage for today, it's very short. It's very short, yet it's pointed and full, full of challenge and significance. So we're going to dive in. Story goes that Rudyard Kipling, now think the Jungle Book, was a great writer and a poet who made a lot of money for his writings. And one time, a newspaper reporter came up to him and said, Mr. Kipling, I just read that somebody has calculated the amount of money that you make from your writings, and it amounts to over $100 for every word. Mr. Kipling raised his eyebrows and he said, really? I certainly wasn't aware of that. So the reporter reached down in his pocket, he pulled out a crisp $100 bill, and he handed it to Mr. Kipling, and he said, here, here's a $100 bill for you. Now you give me one of those $100 words. Mr. Kipling looked at that $100 bill for a moment. And he took it. He folded it up and put it in his pocket. And he said, thanks. That word, thanks, certainly is one of those $100 words. If we were to adopt an attitude of thanksgiving in our lives, our lives would be changed. We would find an appreciation in each day. Those two big little words can have a great impact on our lives and on others' lives and our relationships with others and with God. Just two simple words. Thank you. A quick search. I searched, quote, what happens when I say thank you? 
typing in those words, came up with over 300 billion, 700 million results. Is saying thank you important? It sure appears to be so for my search and for other numerous reasons. If you were to read a few of those responses in the search, you would discover that health sites show that thankful people are healthier people, that the benefits include, include being able to cope with stress, more mental alertness and awareness, a greater sense of optimism about the future, and an improved physical health. One study, in fact, said that a sincere gratitude or thanksgiving is the healthiest of all human emotion. Hans Selle, who's considered the father of stress studies, said this. He said, gratitude produces more positive emotional energy than any other attitude in life. Thanking is good. It's good for the giver and good for the receiver. It's not just other people that appreciate our thanks. However, God appreciates our thanks too. In fact, I think from our scripture we see that God expects our thanks calls us to give thanks in every situation. It draws us closer to him. And when we have this proper perspective on our troubles, like Paul, the writer of our scripture for today, we can give thanks. We can give thanks to God in all circumstances of life. Now listen, I want to be sure. I don't think Paul was saying that we have to be thankful for our problems. But I think he was saying we need to be thankful in them. Being thankful in them allows God to turn them around, to turn them around for our good. Do you remember? Remember that time when Paul and Silas were in chains in jail? Do you recall what they were doing? Were they sitting and grumbling and moaning and complaining and woe is me? No. They were singing. They were singing and praising God. And in that, God sent this earthquake and the prison doors were opened. They were singing and they were praising God, even though they were in prison and in chains. They knew. They knew that God would help them through. And because of that joy that they had, the jailer and his household came to follow Jesus as well. Paul and Silas thanked and praised God, and God changed their situation. Others, others can come to Christ because of the example the example when we show thanks and praise to God, like that jailer and his family did, especially in the midst of difficult times. Oftentimes we get caught up in our problems. We get caught up in them so much that we forget. That we forget to give God thanks and praise. If Paul and Silas could praise and give thanks in the circumstances they were in, while they were in jail and while they were in chains, I think we. I think we could remember to give thanks and praise as well. Now, an experiment was done in New York Central Park by an advertising agency. They took a man and they dressed him up as a blind person, and they gave him a cup to collect money. And on the first day, they put a sign around his neck, and it read, I'm blind. And on that day, he went and sat out in the park, and he only collected about $4. The next day, this ad agency did a little something different. They changed the sign. They changed the sign to read, it's springtime, and I'm blind. That day, that day he collected nearly $40. That day people realized, they realized how blessed they were. How blessed they were to have the beautiful flowers and the birds and the sunrise and the sunset. And they realized they were blessed because they were able to see them. Friends, even though this year of 2020 has been hard, and even though some of us may wonder and think maybe we haven't been blessed that much, I think we need to remember that we are blessed indeed. And God is waiting. God is waiting to receive our thanks. Can we take time? Can we take time today and every day to give thanks to God? Let's be expressive. Expressive in our words and in our actions. Psalm 98 begins, sing to the Lord a new song because he has done wonderful things. What wonderful things has, have you seen God do in your life? Or in the lives of those around you? Or in this community of First United Methodist Church? Psalm 98 ends, it ends with these words, that he will establish justice in the world rightly. He will establish justice among all people fairly. That 
<laughs> that is something that we can give God thanks for. When we say thanks to God, we can do it in so many ways and in so many different circumstances. Like when we decide to spend time with God, not just an hour a week when we gather for worship, but every day of our lives. Or when we forgive others. Or when we serve in his church. When we share the gospel, when we share the good news of Jesus with others. When we reach out to hurting people. When we give God the best of our time and our talent and our treasure to support God's work. All of those ways we are showing thanks to God. Now you might be wondering, why is this chair sitting here? Usually there's not a chair sitting up here. Well, in preparation for this morning, I came across a video of a man who had this chair up here numerous times throughout his day. So he got up in the morning, and he was doing one of those stretches, you know, to get all the kinks out. I don't know about you, and maybe it's just me, but as I get older, those stretches and that, like, getting ready for the morning seems a little tougher. There's a little, little tougher, a little, little more difficulty in that. But yet... Yet, even with that, he did that and he began his day by sitting in that chair. By sitting down in that chair to give thanks. He started his day by thanking God for the opportunity that lay ahead of him. So from starting his day that way, he got up and he went downstairs to the breakfast table. Went down to the table where his children were already there eating breakfast and he thought he'd go down there and pull out his morning newspaper and have his cup of coffee. And rather than being bothered by the chatter of the children, that chair appeared again. And once again, he sat down in that chair of thanksgiving and gave thanks for the opportunity that he had to spend time with his kids. And thank God for the opportunity to enjoy even that crazy, noisy chatter. So from there, they got in the car and he dropped the kids off at school. He drove them to the school and he started to drive away and his little daughter turned around and he looked and he saw his daughter waving, waving at him as she was walking into the building. Well, that chair appeared again. That chair appeared again and he was prompted yet again to give thanks. To give thanks for those moments, those moments that we have with our friends and with our family, for those moments that he had with his daughter and her sharing that moment of gratitude with him. So from that point, he went on to work, sat down at his desk. It looked like he had one of those jobs where he sat in a cubicle at a desk and did a lot of phone work. He finished, he, you see him hang up the phone, and you just see this kind of thing. And we all know what this kind of thing is after you get off a phone call, right? Just frustrating, difficult phone call. But instead of dwelling on that, and instead of dwelling on the difficulty, that chair appeared again. And he sat in it yet again to give thanks. To give thanks for the fact that he had a job. To give thanks for even in the difficult times, there are good things that happen. And throughout his day, throughout his day, throughout many different um, encounters throughout the day, we see this chair appear, and he takes a seat in it again. I wonder, when and where can we imagine that chair appearing for us? Saying thank you is more than just a polite thing to do. It directly affects our brains. Did you know that expressing gratitude instantly stimulates a part in our brain associated with happiness? Instantly. Just taking a minute to reflect on the things that you're grateful for today has been proven to improve energy and lighten your mood. A well-known researcher on gratitude, Jeffrey Fro, looked back at the lack of appreciation in people. He said that the most likely cause for ingratitude in people is our brain's ability to adapt. We get used to things and soon we just start taking them for granted. We begin to expect that as the norm. So what could we do to counteract that or to change that? We can think back. I think we could go back to that chair. We could take that conscious effort and pause. Take that conscious effort and pause to give thanks. To recognize the ways that God has been at work in our lives. So much power and so much impact in two 
really big, yet little words. We all have this incredibly powerful tool. Those two words, thank you. Thank you has the ability to do so much good. Jeffrey Fro also co-authored a book called Making Grateful Kids. In it, he shares five key elements to an effective thank you. And I think these five elements can apply to all of us. So here they are. First, be timely. While it's never too late to express gratitude, sooner is always better. Two, to compliment the attributes of a person, not just the good deed. Always allow the thank you to go beyond the deed or the action, to make it more about the person behind the action. Thirdly, notice the intent. This is the core of an authentic, heartfelt thank you. When you recognize the intent, you acknowledge that something good was done. Fourth, recognize the cost. Whenever, something, whenever someone does something nice for us, they maybe are giving up time or energy or money or something else that they could have easily spent on themselves. So let's acknowledge that generosity in others. And fifth, articulate the value of benefit. Share with people the good that came from their kind act. Let them know how their choices made a positive difference. The benefits and the outcomes they're saying thank you are huge. So when was the last time you said thank you? Chances are it probably wasn't that long ago. Most of us say those two little words many times throughout the day. Maybe we stopped at a drive through on our way and we bought a cup of coffee. Or maybe we got to a meeting and as we arrived we thanked someone for hosting the meeting. Or maybe as other people came, we thanked them for coming. Maybe we say thank you when we sit down at the table for dinner. We often say it, but do we actually often think about what it means? It's easy to say those two words, but a real thank you is, worth, is much more than those two words. When you thank someone, you create a connection. To thank someone is to acknowledge that they've played an important role in your life. It's easy to say thank you, but it's so easy also to miss that meaning. Thank you is a shorter version of I thank you. And the word thank comes from the word think. So the original meaning of thank you could be translated as, I think favorably on you for what you have done for me. I think favorably on you for what you have done for me. I think if we live with that definition, then we have a great deal to be thankful to God and to others for. C.S. Lewis said, we, have, we delight to praise what we enjoy because praise not merely expresses but completes the enjoyment. We delight to praise what we enjoy because the praise not merely expresses but completes the enjoyment. It is its appointed consummation. Likely, we could all stand from growing in recognizing the reasons around us to be thankful. They are all around us. But simply becoming more grateful in our hearts, that's just the beginning. If that thankfulness rises up in our hearts, but it doesn't come out of our mouths, then we're only experiencing the beginnings of that joy. Gratitude is only fully enjoyed when we share it with others. So next time you find yourself thinking a thankful thought, share it. Expressing gratitude to God can strengthen our faith. What new mercy has God given you? Did you sleep well last night? Maybe as you sat down to breakfast, you had a banana, and that banana was perfectly ripe. Now that's hard to come by, but maybe it was. Don't let the day pass you by without stopping to consider what you could give thanks for. The more you see God's faithfulness in your life, the more confidently you will rest in that faithfulness in the future. You will stir up God's people to love and good deeds. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 says, Let us consider each other carefully for the purpose of sparking love and good deeds. Don't stop meeting together with other believers, which some have gotten into the habit of doing. Instead, encourage each other, especially as you see the day drawing near. Tell others in your life what you appreciate about them and why. It will spur them on to keep serving. You will create this climate of gratitude. Psalm 145 tells us to share, 
to share with the next generation. Share how God answered prayer, how God provided necessary resources, or replaced your sorrow with joy. Sharing this will encourage others. It will encourage others to find their hope in God. Speak your words of thanks and let God transform you. Speak those two, yet big little words. Mother Teresa once said, kind words can be short and easy to speak, but their echoes are truly endless. We must never forget the power of words, especially those two big little words. Thank you.